بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم يعطيك العافية last time we was uh, talking about uh, normal pressure and barometer and pressure in liquids today we are going to continue talking about uh, the barometer and we are going to start the talking about the manometer okay then we are going to finish this worksheet that talks about pressure okay بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Question number 19, what do we ask here? They say that the diagram shows a simple mercury barometer. The barometer is reading H height of mercury. Okay, what is the pressure at the point S at the surface of the mercury? Now we know that the pressure okay, uh, for the mercury, it depends on the density and the height. So what's inside here? There is nothing, there is vacuum. So what will be the pressure? It will be approximately what? Zero. There is a little, uh, a few uh, mercury vapor. Okay, so maybe there will be a pressure, but it will be approximately zero. But here it will be the atmospheric pressure. Here it will be equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is density times gravity times height. So the answer, if they ask about this level here, it will be D. Okay, so the answer is A for the first question, 19. Second question, if we tilt, if we tilt the barometer, now it doesn't matter how we tilt it or we make it horizontal. So the idea how much is the vertical height, okay, that keeps the pressure equal to the atmospheric pressure. So they say that the column of mercury in uh, uh, mercury barometers shown above is 76 centimeter height on a certain day when the barometer is vertical. If the barometer is tilted a few degrees, the vertical height of the mercury also what still 76 watt centimeter. Good? Come on. Okay. So then we say that we can use water instead of mercury, but it will be above 10 meters, uh, the length of the tube. Okay? Now, what's, what is the manometer or manometer? The manometer or the manometer, it's a device that we usually use it to measure the gas pressure inside containers. A device measures the gas pressure. Now, we know that here in this question, what do we have? Now imagine that we have a, a, a pipe that has a U shape and we fill it from one side with what? With a, a liquid, for example, mercury or water. Is it full only the right side or it will be left the right, left side? What do you think? Huh? Right side, it will be lifted with the water or left side or what do you think? Both sides, huh? tell me the answer. Both sides it will be filled. Okay, so you said that both sides will be filled. Now, the other question. What is the question? Uh, I will ask, I will repeat the question again. Okay. Uh, if we fill this pipe, okay, and forget this bulb, okay, or this container, if we fill this side of a pipe of water, okay, that has a U shape. Only the right side will be filled with water or the left side or both sides. Yes, both sides. So both sides, Hamad Khalid, both sides will be filled with what? Okay, and they will have same what? Same level. They will have what? Same level. So let's assume that. We have a pipe that closed and there is a valve here. And this valve was closed and I bring a, a bottle of gas container, okay? And this gas container, I put it here on this end of this uh, YouTube, okay, shape. Okay, that both sides are equal because they have same atmospheric pressure. And suddenly I open the valve. When I open the valve, what will happen? 
we have three different situations as the vault is open. Okay, what are these three situations? Now, if the gas, if the pressure of the gas is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere, something will happen. If the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere, something else will happen. And if the pressure of the gas is less than the pressure of the atmosphere, something third, third will happen. Let's repeat the question. If we have a U-tube shape, okay, and I fill it with water from one side, it will be both equal, okay? Now, if I connect one of these sides to a valve, okay, to a, a gas container, whatever the gas container, if I, and with a closed valve, and I open the valve. When I open the valve, we have three different situations. What will happen? Okay. Now, if the gas of the pressure is greater, that means it will push the water level or the liquid level or from this side downwards and rises it from the other side upwards. So here, if the gas pressure is greater, so for example, if this was the level initially, here, this liquid, will go down from this side here, for example, two, three centimeter, and it will go up, for example, here also two, three centimeter. So it doesn't matter how much it goes up or it goes down, it's matter how much the difference in level between what both sides. So what we are going to say, we're going to measure the height from here to here. What this height tell us, H? What this height H tell us, yes. P ga uh, gas pressure for level, okay, hold on, I know if you ask the ambu to ajube. Okay, liquid, okay, to the right side will go and the left side will go down. Okay, the internet cut out, no problem. I will download this, uh, uh, this uh, video. Pressure, sorry, the pressure, what about the pressure? Okay, now this height here, H, I will measure to tell me how much is the pressure of the, at of the gas is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere because on this point, what's act here? The pressure of the gas, okay? On this point, we have two pressure. The pressure of the atmosphere acts here, okay? The pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the liquid water or mercury or doesn't matter, okay? So again, if I have a, a U-tube shape, okay? And I fill it with certain liquid water or uh, mercury, doesn't matter. Both sides, it will be the same because they have the same atmospheric pressure on both sides, okay? If I connect it with a valve with a container that contains some gas and I open the valve, we have three different situations. What will happen? First situation, if the pressure of the gas is more than the atmospheric pressure, it will push the gas, it will push the liquid here to move downward, two, three, four, doesn't matter how many centimeters, to rise in the other side, the same thing. So the height here, I need to measure it. Why I will measure this height? Why I will measure this height? I need to measure this a device at the manometer. It's a device that we use it to measure the what? The pressure. So the pressure of the gas at this point equals the same level here at this point, the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the liquid, which is the density of the liquid multiplied by G multiplied by H. This is the formula that I will use it to measure how much is the pressure of the gas inside the container? Maybe more than any other. If I have a friend, ah, في ناس عم بيبعثوا لي أستاذ إحنا دخلنا متأخرين والإنترنت فيه مشكلة. Okay. طيب. Okay. More than. So, if I have a YouTube shape, okay, like this. Okay, and I fill it with water or liquid in one side or mercury. Both sides will be level because both have the same pressure. If I connect this, then I will connect this gas container with a valve. I open the valve. What will happen in this level of the liquid? Okay, if the pressure is greater, if the gas pressure is greater or gas pressure is uh, less than or gas pressure is more equal to the atmospheric pressure, we have three different situations. If the pressure of the gas is more than the pressure of the atmosphere, it goes a little bit down for, from one side and goes to, to the other side uh, up. So both sides, we have to know how much is the difference, the height, we measure this height, and we will use the formula that the pressure of the gas at this point equal the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the what? Of the liquid that we use. But if both pressures are the same, they will still same what? 
same level, they will not change. If the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere outside, it will be the same level, no change. But if we have this pressure, okay, and for this gas, and it is less than, that means the atmospheric pressure will push the liquid few centimeters downwards from the original value it was. For example, this was the original position. So that means it will go down from here a little bit, okay? And it will rise on the other side by the same value, okay? So why is this happening? Because the pressure, I'm sorry, because the pressure of the atmosphere is greater than the pressure of the gas. So it goes like this. What do I need? I need to measure the height, the difference in the height between here and here, this height H, I will measure it. And due to this height H, that means the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus density times gravity times height of the liquid that we use it here. Okay, good. Sometimes they don't use a U-shaped uh, manometer, they use an N-shaped manometer. So every time the liquid, okay, mercury or water or alcohol, doesn't matter, goes to the right side and to the left side, okay, according to the pressure of the gas, if it's above or below the atmospheric pressure. So we have to know how much is the difference in the height to know on which, uh, if the pressure of the gas is more or less than the atmospheric pressure, we will add or we will what? Subtract. Now, what is the name of the first person step on the moon? Who is the first person to step on the moon? Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, yes, Neil Armstrong. Now, Neil Armstrong, what he did, he bring a bottle, okay, and fill it with air or gases from the moon, okay? He bring a, a container and he fill it with what? With uh, uh, air from the moon, okay? And he closed this container, and he, when he returned back to the Earth, he connect this gas container that he bring it from the moon uh, to the, this valve, to this manometer, and he opened the valve. What will happen? Yes. Tell me the answer. What will happen? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing will happen yet. Right. Oh, ah, what will happen? There is no air in the space. Okay, that means there is a vacuum in, on the moon. So because there is vacuum, there is no air, that means like the vacuum clear, cleaner, it will what? Suck all the liquid, all the liquid here. What will happen to it? All the liquid will get inside the what? This container. That's exactly what will happen when you have a straw and you put it inside uh, any juice. Okay, when you suck it, you make a low pressure, okay, by your lungs and by your mouth, approximately very low pressure, zero. And the difference in the pressure between outside above the juice and inside the straw and your mouth is very low or approximately zero. The liquid pass through the straw to your mouth. So the same thing here, all this liquid get inside. That's a proof that there's no, okay, there's no, there's no gas, gas and or no atmosphere on the moon and there's no pressure, okay? Tamam, حلو الفكرة صح? طيب طيب. Now, question number 20. I want from you to read the questions together, okay, and tell me the answer. A water manometer is used to measure the pressure of the gas supply to a house. It gives a reading of each centimeter of water. So there's a gas pressure pushes the uh, water level to goes down here a certain height, it goes here uh, uh, up a certain height. So the difference in the height is H. Why it's better to use water rather than mercury in this experiment, in this manometer? I'll give you a few seconds to tell me what's the answer. Send me the answer. I want from all of you to, to give me the answer. Hazem, Salma, Ilaf, Ahmed. Okay, Marwan, Mustafa, but, all of you, send me the answer. But sir, the water will evaporate. After a after long time will evaporate, not after a short time. Okay, and now it doesn't matter if it evaporates or not. I need to compare between water and mercury now. Hazem, send me the answer. Marwan, send me an answer. Okay. 
Muhammad said me the answer. Who else? Salma said me, thank you. Marwan, shukran. Who else? I will not tell you the answer now. I want to see the others, how they will answer. Hold on. Yes, what about the rest? Ah, Mustafa. Ah, Rima. Yes, Sandra. Okay, Ayman, what about you? Adham. Okay. Let's read the, the answers, okay? Shukran, shukran, ya Mustafa, shukran, ya Sandra. Okay. Khayyan shuf. H will be too large if mercury is used. H it will be too small if mercury is used. The tube would need a manometer if mercury is used. The tube would need to be narrower, sorry, narrower. Doesn't matter how narrow or wide it is, okay? The tube would be to be wider, okay? So both of these answers are not accepted. Doesn't matter how big is the manometer, wide or thin or whatever, okay? Narrow. So the answer, it will be A or B. Now, if I use mercury, and we know that mercury, the density of mercury, Hg, is much greater than the density of what? Of water. So to have the same pressure, uh -huh, that means the height of the mercury will be what? Very small, too small, cannot be read. Okay? So the answer is B. H would be too small if mercury is what is used. شكرا الشباب والصبايا اللي بعتونا الأجوب الجواب الصح اللي هو B وشكرا لكل اللي حاول يجاوب إذا صح ولا غلط. So if we use mercury, the height, the difference in the height H to be too small cannot be read. Okay, if and if we read it, it will not be accurate to use it in a formula to calculate the pressure. So the answer is B. Okay, next. Here we have two different situations of a manometer. Okay. One, the manometer has a pressure gas more than the atmospheric. So they say that the height here of mercury is 45 millimeter of mercury. And the pressure of the atmosphere, Pa, is 100 kilopascal, which is 760 or 750 millimeter of mercury. So how much the pressure of the gas? It's what? The pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of what? Of the mercury. So the answer is 700. Uh, 95 millimeter of mercury. So we have several units of pressure so far. We have a Newton per centimeter square, a Newton per meter square, which is called pressure, Pascal, sorry. We have something called bar. We have now a millimeter of what? Of mercury. So we have several units of what? Of pressure. It doesn't matter the, the unit that they use it, if it's important how to use it. Now, in this situation, we add because the pressure of the gas is greater. That's why it pushes the liquid uh, uh, from its side down and to the other side. Now in this question, the pressure of the gas here in the container which was less than the atmospheric pressure because the pressure of the atmosphere pushes the mercury and its side downwards and goes to the other side by 24 millimeter of mercury. And they say that the pressure of the atmosphere outside is 750 millimeter of mercury. So what we would do 750 minus 24 millimeter of mercury. So the answer is 726 millimeter of mercury. Good. So if I need, I need to find the pressure, it would be density of mercury times gravity times the height in millimeter. I need to convert it into meter. So that means 13,600 times 10 times 0 0.27 to six, I convert from millimeter to meter. And by using that, I find how much the pressure in what? In Pascal, okay? Good. Is it clear, easy? If you please, if it's clear and easy, show me your thumb or, and if you have a question, show me your hand, raise your hand, okay? Tamam, let me see. Okay, Finas if it If you have a question, raise your hand, okay? What is the density of mercury? It's 13,600. 
Yes, that's the pressure. It's less than the atmospheric pressure, Ya Muhammad, shukran ilak, which is 100,000 Pascal. What's your question, Marwan? What is your question? I didn't understand the last part. The, uh, the first picture or the second picture? Uh, second. It doesn't matter because both have the same idea. The pressure of the gas is more than the pressure of the atmosphere. It push the liquid in its side and go, rises on the other side. Or if the pressure of the gas is less, is more than, uh, sorry, the gas is less than the pressure of the atmosphere. That means the pressure of the atmosphere pushes the mercury on its side. As you can see, it curved like this because it's mercury. Now we measure the difference in the height from here and here, or from here to here. And we have the difference, which is uh, 45 millimeter of mercury or 24 millimeter of mercury. We will say that the pressure of the gas equal the pressure of the atmosphere, which is given, okay? Plus, if it more, minus if it less, the difference in what? In the mercury level. And 750 minus 24, it's 726 millimeter of mercury. Now, if they ask, and they didn't ask so far or in the last 20 years or more than this, they didn't ask how to convert from millimeter to me of mercury to Pascal. But if they ask, well, how what do I do? I will find the pressure equal density of mercury, which is given, supposed to be given, 13,600 multiplied by G, which is 10, multiplied by the height that you find it out, which is 726 millimeter, you have to convert it into meter, 0 0.726. And the answer as uh, Hamad sent it to us, it's uh, 98,736 Pascal, that means 9,900, uh, sorry, 99,000 approximately, if, I, if we wrote it in two significant figures. Tamam? Okay, so why HX is next to millimeter? Millimeter of mercury, we use mercury here in this, manu, manu, uh, in this manometer. We use mercury. So because mercury, it's a, a, a sample that we usually use it to measure what the pressure of what, of uh, uh, objects like gases or something like this. Hold on. Okay. Can you hold on a, a, a moment, if you please? Okay, Shabab, Allah, I'll take Let's continue. Now, okay, Marwan, did I answer your question? Good. Now, we also, we can use the manometer, okay, for other use, not only to measure the pressure of gas container. We can, yes, you are welcome, Marwan. We can also find the density of liquids by using a manometer, okay? So if we have two liquids, okay, and we know that the, the denser liquid will sink and the lighter, dancing, lighter uh, liquid will float. So if I have two uh, liquids with different density, if this is L1, okay, liquid one, and this is liquid L2. This is the height H2 for it, and this is the height H1. Now it's obvious because the height here, it's more than the height here. That means the pressure of this one on this point, it's equal to the pressure on this point. So because they have same pressure, that means liquid L1 has lower density. So what's the pressure acts here? We have atmospheric pressure, pressure of atmosphere, plus the pressure of what of the liquids. So on po both points here, right side and left side, the pressure is e the same, the same equal. So that means the pressure of the atmosphere plus density of liquid two times G times height two equal pressure of atmosphere plus density of liquid one times G times height of H1. Okay, so uh, atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure, we cancel it out. G with the G, they, we cancel it out. So what we will have, density of liquid two times height of liquid two equal density of liquid one times height of what of liquid one. This is the formula that we can use it to find the atmospheric pressure 
okay, uh, sorry, to find the density of different liquids, unknown liquids, by having the same pressure. Okay, so let's repeat that again. If we mix, uh, we cannot mix two liquids easily. So if we have two liquids and we put one on one side and we put the other on the other side, we will see that they will have different heights. So the pressure on the, on the, on the bottom of one of them, okay, it will be the same on this other level. We need to measure the height for both of them. We'll say that the pressure on this point and the pressure on this point is the same. So we say that pressure on both sides, left side and right side, equal the same each other. So the pressure here is the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of the liquid, which is rho g h for both sides. So atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure cancel out each other. Density of second liquid times g times height of the second liquid equal density of the first liquid times g, the gravity acceleration times the height of the first liquid. G with g cancel out each other. This is the formula. Okay, if they are mixed, that means they resolve each other. Yani, for example, uh, uh, salty water with fresh water, we can, uh, they can mix each other. We can't find the density of uh, one of them compared to the other because they will be mixed. Okay, tamam? Okay, Muhammad. Now, question number 21. Question number 22, 23, 24. 25, 26, seven are your homeworks. All these questions are your homeworks, okay? Tamam? Good, sir. Okay, let's move on to question number what? 28, page 23. A Hoover craft, a Hoover craft has a mass of 10,000 kilograms it hovers at a constant height above the ground. Calculate the weight of the Hoover craft. Yes, who can tell me how, what's the formula for the weight? Weight equal what? Write it down, send it to me. Weight equal? Yes, Leith. Yes, Mustafa. Okay, sir, what do you mean to convert? Uh, no, 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 the uh, Nash convert, hello. How do we convert? Okay, uh, each one gram per centimeter cube equal 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, but we, we talked about that before. Oh, yes, thank you, Leith. Thank you, Marwan. The weight equal mass at times what? Gravity, the mass, which is 10,000, multiplied by the gravity acceleration, which is 10. So the answer would be 100 thousand what pascal uh, i'm sorry newton hundred thousand newton that's what that's the weight of the hoover craft next what is the value of the upward force exerted by the air cushion how much is the upward force what do you think how much is the force upwards here they ask about the weight and they said it moved at constant height okay so what will be the answer Aya hazard. Aya ilaf. They will be equal. Shukran ya Muhammad. Shukran ya Layth. So the upward force, okay, it will be the same as the weight, which is how much? 100,000 Newton. Bravo. Shukran ya Layth. Shukran ya Muhammad. Shukran ya Marwan. Okay. C. The hovercraft has a rectangular shape, a base of length 20 meter and width 5 meter. Calculate the pressure exists, okay, above atmospheric pressure that the air cushion under the aircraft. Now we know that pressure equal what, ya shabab? Yes, the answer, bravo, ya hazam. Shukran. What did you do, ya hazam? You used the formula, pressure equal what? Force over what? Area. Yeah, bravo. No, force over area. What's the force? It's 100,000. 100, what? 1,000. Divide by. How big is the area? We have the length and we have the width. So we multiply 20 by 5, which is 100. So 100,000 divided by 100, it will be 1,000 what? 1,000 Pascal. Yes, bravo. 1,000 Pascal. Shukran. Yes. Five. Next. They say that here, the Hoover craft accelerates horizontally. At 
meters per second square. The hovercraft accelerates horizontally at 2.5 meters per second square. Calculate the horizontal force exerted by the driver uh, propelled. Okay, you may uh, ignore air resistance. So how much is the horizontal force that causes this acceleration? What's the formula? We know that pressure, I'm sorry, force or resultant force equal, yes, Muhammad Shukran, mass multiplied by what? By acceleration. So how much is the mass? It's what? This is the mass, 10,000. So 10,000 multiplied by 2.5, the acceleration that they give it to us, and the answer, it will be 25, what? Thousand a newton. Be careful, Muhammad. Okay, so twenty-five thousand what a newton. That's what the force that we need. Okay, the horizontal force to make this what acceleration. Good. شباب وينكو حاسسكو نايمين صح صحولي صح صحولي وسمحتوا. I don't understand B. Now we know that uh, we know that force equal mass times acceleration. Do you remember this formula? Resultant force equal mass times acceleration. Okay, now they said that there is a it accelerates horizontally by 2.5. This is the acceleration. How much is the force that makes this acceleration? How much the horizontal force that makes this acceleration, the resultant force? So we multiply the mass, okay? The mass, which is 10,000, multiplied by the acceleration, which is the given, okay? So the resultant force is in a Newton and the mass is in kilograms, okay? Tamam? Okay, Muhammad. Last question in this worksheet. Last question in this worksheet. What they said. The figure below shows a hydraulic lift in a car. The figure below shows a hydraulic lift in a car. Repair workshop. We have a car. We have two supports that has four pistons to lift it up. Each has a, an area of 0 0.02 meters square. And there is one input force to be called uh, uh, piston A with a force, uh, with an area, sorry, 0 0.01 meters square, okay? And these are hydraulic fluids, okay? What they ask? The hydraulic uh, fluid transmit the pressure. The hydraulic fluid transmits the pressure caused by piston A equally to each of the four pistons, okay, held, holding the car with the supports, okay? So these four pistons, they are holding the two supports and the car, okay? The pressure throughout the fluid is what is the same. So we are going to talk about hydraulic system here. We're going to use the values for the force and the, uh, and the area to find the pressure according to what we learned before. So the force is how much? 100,000, uh, sorry, 1,000 Newton on piston A. It is just enough, okay? Just enough to rise the car. So when they say just enough to rise the car, that means it's still balanced, okay? We assume it's balanced. If there's no increase in speed, there's no acceleration. So it is just enough, okay? So that means the force input and equal the force output, which is equal to hold the thing's weight of the two supports and weight of the car. What they ask, okay? Look here, ya shabab. First thing, using values from the same previous figure, fine. The pressure caused by piston A on the fluid. Now we know that pressure equal what, ya shabab? Force over area. So how much is the force? It's a, a thousand. Shukran Muhammad, bravo, a thousand over. How much is the area? The area of piston A is 0 0.01, 0 0.01, okay? So by using this calculator, it will be, shukran Abdul Rahman, 100,000 watt pascal. 100,000 pascal, it will be the pressure, okay, on this piston A, okay? And this pressure is the same on all the other four pistons. Good? Now, next, what they said. Calculate, find out the total upward force. Now we know that force in the first situation over the area of the second situation 
of the first situation equal force on the second situation divided by the total area on what? On the second situation, which is the same as the pressure, which is equal to how much? 100 watt, 1000. They ask about the force. Now, by using calculator, okay, we know that force output equal the uh, pressure, which is given 100. Thousand multiply by the area, and as we see, can see here, we have four pistons. Each piston with area 0 0.08, 0 02, sorry. So that means four multiplied by 0 0.02. That means the total force it will be how much? 8,000 watt newton. Why we got 8,000 newton? Because we have the same pressure. Okay. but different area. So whenever the area is bigger, the force, it will be bigger. Look here, the input force is a thousand. The output force, it's 8,000. So this is a force multiplier by eight times. Next, what they ask. B, the weight of each of the two support cars is how much? A thousand Newton. So this is a support, has a weight downwards, 1,000. This is another support, has a weight 1,000 downwards. Okay, calculate the mass of the car. So we have not the weight of the car downwards, we have the mass of the car. Okay, so because they say just enough to lift uh, what the car, that means the forces upwards, that we just find it out, the 8,000 Newton, the forces upwards, 8,000 Newton, is equal to the forces downwards. So the forces up is equal to the forces where down. The forces up, which is how much? 8,000, we just find it out, 8,000 Newton, equal the forces down, which is the weight of the car, plus two, the weight of the supports. Again, let's return back here. We have two supports that act with the weight downwards, downwards, and they say that the weight of each support is 1,000. So we have 1,000 to the right, 1,000 to the left, and we have the weight of the car, okay? So the weight of the car plus two, the weight of the supports. That means the weight of the car is equal how much? 8,000 minus two times 1,000, which is 2,000. So how much the weight of the car? It will be, it will be what? 6,000. But did they ask about the weight or they ask about the mass of the car? Did they ask about the weight or they ask about the mass of the car? They ask about the mass of the car, yes. So we know that weight of the car equal mass multiplied by gravity, acceleration. So that means the mass is equal to the weight, which is 6,000 divided by the G, which is 10. So the answer will be how much? 600 kilogram. This is the mass of this car in this workshop. I will explain again from the beginning. This is hydraulic system. And we know that pressure in by piston A is equal to the pressure out by the four pistons. Okay? That means the force in over the area of A equal the force up over the four times the area for each piston the areas of out, okay? So we, in the first part, AI, we find the pressure in, okay, by the force in over the area of area A, and it was 100,000 Pascal. Now this pressure, 100,000 Pascal, okay, I will use it to find how much is the force. Now we know that force equal pressure times area. Force equal pressure multiplied by area. How much is the pressure? It's the same as the pressure that we just find it out here. It's 100,000 times. How much is the area? We have four pistons. Each piston is 0 0.02. So four times 0 0.02. This is the total area multiplied by the pressure. And the answer that the, the upward force is equal to 8,000 Newton. Good. Next, B, the weight of each of these two support cars, we have two support cars, is a thousand Newton. So we have 
a support on the right, another support on what on the left. So two times the weight of each support, which is a thousand, plus the weight of the car are the forces down. So we have the weight of the car acts down, the weight of each of these two, two supports act down. Okay. So the upward force, which is 8,000, equal the weight of the car. They, they, they didn't ask about the weight of the car, they asked about the mass of the car. Okay, plus two times the weight of each support. Two times 1,000 is 2,000. Move it to the other side, 8,000 minus 2,000 would be 6,000. This is the weight of what? Of the car. But the question didn't ask about the, the, the weight, it's asked about what? The mass of the car. So what we will do, we know that weight equal mass times gravity. So that means mass equal, okay, uh, the force, which is the weight, 6,000 divided by gravity, which is 10. And the answer is 600 kilograms. Sure, I call.